This is Midwest Moxie, a show about our region's visionary founders and the experiences that shape them. I'm your host, Kathleen Gallagher, Executive Director of Five Lakes Institute. Tim Brummel's students start out to improve gut health. After stints at ConAgra and Berkshire Hathaway, he spent nearly two decades helping startups and other companies raise money and manage their growth. But when his work turned up a sugarcane variety with exciting potential to improve microbiome health, Tim got the startup bug himself. He co-founded PreNexus Health to make prebiotic ingredients for gut health. Then he co-founded Lincoln, Nebraska-based Symbiotic Health to make probiotic ingredients for gut and overall health. Symbiotic now has 14 employees and has raised $8 million. Tim, welcome to Midwest Moxie. Thank you. Earlier in your career, you worked for Warren Buffett, the legendary investor who runs Berkshire Hathaway. What's the biggest thing you learned from him? So there's really lots of things to learn, but to specifically answer your question, I believe um, one of the things I learned from Berkshire Hathaway, Warren, is to stay within the lanes of your governance. And most companies focus on sales or marketing or finance or different. Those are all important, but most of them don't understand governance. And that's probably the biggest thing that I learned. So by governance, you mean uh, how to put together a board, how to kind of... Governance is, is, is kind of what the word stands for in definition. It's the governing documents and the governance boards, how you operate, how you manage, how you build your structure how you have a management operating system. And it's making sure too that from the board down and then from from the bottom up, you report back to the board. So from the board down, you set goals uh, and um, um, you have guidelines to operate on and you stay within those lanes. And if you're gonna raise money successfully and deal with other people's money, you have to have really good governance to honor the people of what you say you're gonna do and follow through and you report that to the board. All the things that aren't the most exciting things to talk about, but make for a really well-run company. Right? Correct. And, and I will say it's kind of like um, the biggest failures I see in startups and young companies and in, through my 20 years of consulting, it's companies don't understand what their governance are. They go out and they make decisions outside of their governance. They get in trouble and then they're in real trouble. And if they would have stayed in their lanes, they it, it knew what they could and couldn't do. It, it, it just makes for a more well-rounded business. Your first company, PreNexus, started with that unique sugarcane variety and now makes prebiotic ingredients that promote good gut health, um, well, good gut bacteria growth and aid digestive health. After four years, you turned that company over to another leader and co-founded Symbiotic which makes clinically researched next generation probiotic ingredients and plays into this emerging idea that the gut is where good overall health starts. Tell us what got you so excited about that idea and symbiotics technology. So what Prenexus started was a really good understanding of what goes on in the gut, but what symbiotic brought a more holistic what we call holistic approach to the overall gut needs, an understanding of how the prebiotic functions in the human gut, how they relate to the probiotic microbes that are commonly found in the human gut. And then really on the symbiotic focus and technology platforms, it's, it's how the, the prebiotic is food for the probiotic and how the probiotic then has linkages through genomic testing of the, of the metabolites and, and how they relate to overall um, health, metabolic health, in order that we could bring products to the market that allow people to feel a change in their gut. And one without the other is not always perfect. In the world of science and research, you'll often find that more people than not and um, it's very rare to see over 50%, but it averages in the 30s to see people respond to a prebiotic intervention or to respond to a probiotic intervention. And in the combination of understanding how the two pair together is, is a much more holistic approach as well as a confidence approach as we've seen 
in clinical research, when they're paired together, you give a food source to the probiotic to do what it's supposed to do. It helps it establish, it helps it persist in the gut. And, and we get literally almost 100% responders. So together, they're more powerful than alone. And this is all about having a good bacteria balance in your gut, right? Right. Yeah. It, hence our name, symbiotic, is, is the combination of the two. It, it doesn't mean that our products in the marketplace are both a pre and a pro. We focus on that probiotic using the prebiotics that are commonly found in the in, ingredient marketplace. But yeah, you're correct. So here's my problem. Like, I mean, I know I walk into a grocery store and I look at this growing number of um, prebiotic sodas and probiotic supplements. And, you know, there are all these, um, everyone's thinking about gut health, right? But what you're doing is you're, you're looking at it, you're using scientific research to um, look at it because it's confusing out there, right? Why is it so important that you have this scientific backing to your well, well, so there's there's hundreds of hundreds of projects on the market, and to be on the market, they probably most of them gone through um, an FDA clearance, a new dietary ingredient clearance, or in the, in food and beverage market, a grass generally regarded as safe is an acronym for grass document. But the science is pretty weak. Much of the products on the market have not been clinically studied. And if they have been, they may have been in an animal clinic, which can give some kind of indication of what goes on, but they're not human clinicals. So one of the things that separate us out, that is we want all of our products to be backed by human clinical with the claims that are on the product. So why is it important? And it's confusing to people. It's it's amazing because there's great marketers out there, but but. People don't really understand. And so what we tell people all the time is you should read your label. You should know what you're consuming and you should do a little background research, good research, clinically researched products. And there are people who do it. They put their science right on the website so people can read it and see it. That's important. Well, you know, to that end, one of Symbiotic's unique strains is called IVS1. You can find it in brands that are sold on Amazon, in Ellie's Chocolates, and other brands sold in health food stores, and in specialty stores like Natural Grocers and Whole Foods. What's so special about that strain, the IVS-1 strain that you guys produce? There's a couple things that are extremely important about IVS-1. First of all, it's one of those strains that have not just been studied by us, but it's they've been researched by um, great scientists all around the globe as a strain that's one of the most beneficial for overall human health. In fact, it's one of the strains that's found common in the centurions who live in the blue zones, which you could research. Centurions, people that live to be 100, 107, 108 years, 110 years old. It's a strain that that really helps with digestion, immunity, it helps with GABA production, which is good brain health, um, clarity of thought. We have found that the bifido strains are harder to produce, harder to manufacture. They take a lot more work to get shelf stable, but they're the ones that have great metabolic opportunities in human health. So the probiotics industry, I hadn't realized, but you've helped me understand, is dominated by a few giant companies it actually is helpful to you in terms of competing that those companies dominate. Tell us why. The probiotic industry is a massive industry. It's grown for over 10% for 15 years, and it's in the 7 to 9% growth still. Um, and it's beyond what business cycles would call the hype cycle. It's actually in a mature cycle where you see lots of acquisitions and targeted acquisitions. And so it's becoming a very mature industry. Hence, there's four giants in this industry today. So it, the industry is not broken. They're making lots of money. And to introduce new products and, and stuff is not necessarily on the radar of big businesses who are turning out um, returns. So typically, almost all the strains that are found in the world in products were, with the exception of maybe one or two, were founded by research at, at universities. And then they were bought by companies. But the difficulty 
because it's such a concentrated, highly dominant, makes it very tough to compete in the supply chain. But we're finding ways around it. We're excited about our products. and um, But I will say that is the biggest challenge we have. Well, sometimes what you find, though, is that uh, these big companies acquire companies that are in the supply chain, and then people come to you because they can't get it anymore. The company took it all up, and therefore you can supply them, right? That's correct. You see supply chain shortages. You see a lot of pain. On the other side, it, as much of a struggle it is, um, you also have an X on your back because you know that they're targeting you to be acquired, and you, it's a nice thing for our shareholders and investors. So we talked about how, you know, you really need to read the claims on the bottles. And that's one of the things in this industry. You know, I walk into a big box store looking for a probiotic because my doctor told me to get one because I'm on antibiotics. And it just seems impossible to sort through all the brands. And, and you know, what are my odds of finding a probiotic that's going to work? So <laughs> this is the great question about an industry that's grown fast and consumers only hear the word probiotic. You're on antibiotics, so go get a probiotic. There are virtually of the hundred and so strains out there, most of them are generic knockoffs of other strains, but around a dozen have been properly clinically studied with health outcomes. And they're usually on the label you're able to define in supplements that it may help with digestive health, it may help with um, immune health, or it's shown clinically to be supported. Those are important label things. But when you look on a shelf and there's 30 products there and it's digestive, immune, it's, it, you know, marketers do a good job of trying to differentiate themselves on the market. But our goal is to educate the consumer, to read the labels, to know the science. So in your case, they, you know, it's stated in merchandising that people spend less than 30 seconds picking a product. And so marketers understand that and they make a colorful label or a big splash claim. What, what the product says it is, it may or may not be. And I just encourage consumers to know what they're consuming. Symbiotic won the 2022 Nebraska Governor's Bioscience Award. You've got revenue. You're working on new products like probiotics for dogs and probiotics for helping lactose intolerant humans. How big do you think you can grow? So we just finished our human clinic on lactose intolerant and, and are, are mining through what, what you call the, the scientific data, which looks very positive. There are 70 million people reported lactose intolerant just in North America. And of those 70 million people, you know, to have a product like this would be a game changer. Nobody else has a product like this. So our goal is to have great digestive health products, great immune health products, great um, what we call GABA products and, and um, men and women, children based products and, and literally focus in on those method of action claims like food intolerances, lactose intolerance, and the things that are creeping up in our, in our society of metabolic disorders. Our goal is to try to find those strains who have that metabolite connection to some of those metabolic disorders. So we think we're going to grow really big. Um, obviously, we're not going to consume 70 million people taking our strain. That would be, uh, I would have a supply chain problem tomorrow, but I will shoot for the stars. Thanks so much for sharing your story with us, Tim, and good luck going forward, making everyone's gut healthier. Thank you. You can read more about today's guest by visiting wuwm.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the show as a podcast if you'd like to take us on the go. Just search for Midwest Moxie wherever you get your podcasts. I'm your host, Kathleen Gallagher. Midwest Moxie was created by executive producer Audrey Nowakowski and me. Today's episode was produced by Audrey Nowakowski and engineered by WUWM's Jason Reavy. Join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. to hear from more visionary Midwestern founders building innovative companies. That's right here on 89.7, Milwaukee's NPR. Support for Midwest Moxie comes from Microsoft, whose efforts to drive technology development across the Midwest and beyond include its national TechSpark community engagement work, which started in Wisconsin, its role as co-founder of Titletown Tech in Green Bay, 
and its new AI co-innovation lab at University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. More information is available at Microsoft.com and from Quarles and Brady LLP, a multidisciplinary AmLaw 200 firm with approximately 550 attorneys who support large and small businesses from Fortune 500 companies to startups and entrepreneurs across the country. More at Quarles.com.